Resonance is everywhere in nature. You can see it in the waves of the water, in the singing of the birds, the swinging of the leaves. It's the natural flow of energy and the natural motion. It takes the least resistance. Nothing is linear in nature. Everything is vibrating. And as Tesla said, if you want to understand the universe, think in energy, frequency and vibration. There's one thing missing. Resonance is what he's talking about. Everything is resonant. Everything is vibrating at its own frequency. The whole universe. If we talk about resonance, what influences it? What creates resonance? How does resonance work in a bifiler pancake Tesla coil? When I've got my bifiler coil and it's resonant, it is vibrating in the most natural way. There are three factors uh, influencing this resonance. The first is resistance. The resistance of the wire and the resistance of the electric circuit dampens the uh, voltage rise. It dampens the energy because uh, a resistor transforms electric energy into heat. The other factor that influences the uh, resonant frequency of a bifiler Tesla coil is the inductance. As I explained before in another video, inductance is the capability to store electric energy in its magnetic field. The more energy can be stored into the magnetic field of a bifiler pancake coil, the lower the frequency will be of the resonance. The amount of inductance is dependent on how many turns you use in the bifiler coil and the diameter of the bifiler coil. Then the third factor what well, influences the resonant frequency is the capacity of the coil, the ability to store electric energy in its dielectric field. The more capacity, the lower the resonant frequency of the coil becomes. And to increase capacitance, the bifiler coil already has its magic because the way the windings are, they have a really large uh, voltage difference that makes it mo possible uh, to store more electric energy in the dielectric field because the higher the voltage difference, the higher the energy can be stored. Now to increase this, most of the time the possibility of the coil to store electric energy in the magnetic field is bigger than in its dielectric field. We can increase this in several ways. I simply add a capacitor to the coil. This capacitor is placed in parallel with the coil and therefore the plate area of both windings by the capacitor is being increased. In my previous two videos I showed that there are two possibilities to uh, induce resonance in a bifiler coil. If you've got uh, two or three coils then you can pulse with a square wave one coil or two coils and make a third coil in the middle or to the side of it um, resonant. The pulsed square wave a coil is producing a magnetic field and the magnetic field is changing because it's a square wave, it's, it's turning on and off, so the magnetic field is on and off and therefore the resonant coil, the center coil, is inside this changing magnetic field. And this induces a voltage, as Di uh, Steinmetz told us. A changing magnetic field produces a voltage in the uh, resonant coil that is inside this changing magnetic field. So uh, this voltage is electric energy and it starts resonating if you do it at the right frequency. The other way, as I described in my previous video, is by uh, pulsing the coil with a voltage directly into it. 
and this is done at the resonant frequency of the coil. The resonant sine wave is a perfect sign. This is an indication of uh, the magnetic and dielectric fields that are transforming back and forth into each other. A resonant coil has a changing magnetic field and therefore it will induce a voltage in the nearby coil. This is Lenz law. I wonder what Lenz law has to say about dielectric induction. Because Lenz law only applies to magnetic induction, but we have also got a dielectric field. In Steinmetz's book, uh, he repeats himself several times that the dielectric and the magnetic field are analogs, but they're not the same. So we've got magnetic induction and we've got dielectric induction. And for magnetic induction we've got Lenz law, but I don't know which law applies to dielectric induction. Is it different? I think so. It would be nice, wouldn't it? That's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.